Baruch Haba Torah, Rabba Shaul Dog here once again with another rant. Uh, man, we were we were doing some work down at a country club. And as normal, we drive our work van right to where we need to work so we have access to our tools and our materials and everything else. Well, we pull up there, and little did we know, that we, no, we had no forewarning that there was some kind of PGA amateurs thing going on there. Oh, whoop de doo All right, but anyways, we pull up there, and there's this old man. He just starts screaming and yelling, ah, get that van out of here. We're trying to play golf. Golf? It's a stupid game played by stupid people. I'm sorry if you play golf, if you love it, I, I apologize for that. But anyways, these people that were playing were not the brightest candles in the menorah. Okay, let's just put it that way. All right. Um, I see the priorities that these people have. They're rich, overprivileged, uh, trust fund baby people who believe somehow magically they're going to turn into the next Tiger Woods or the next Phil Mickelson or whatever. Okay. Uh, well, got news for you. Ain't going to happen. Doesn't matter where our van is parked. Uh, you still stink. Okay. I saw your slice there, Mr. Pink. Hot pink golf pants. But anyways, anyways, I see how lost these people are. You know, they put these priorities on these stupid things like a stupid little game. Hit a ball a few hundred yards and go chase it. Wow. Whoa. Hey, you know what? I have a dog that will chase that ball for you. You don't have to chase it yourself in your little hot pink little golf pants, Mr. Metrosexual. Oh, by the way, Metrosexual is gay that doesn't go all the way. That's what Metrosexual is. So any man out there who wants to be all proud and say, I'm a metrosexual, well, you know what? You're gay. You're gay. You just haven't uh, done the nasty thing with, you know, I, I ain't even going to go into detail. But anyways, seeing how these people are so lost. And then I go on to Facebook, on my wall, I posted a picture of this big obese woman with a G on her chest wearing this big spandex leotard thing. A red spandex thing with a blue cape, and uh, she had a mask and a big afro. And uh, it says, Saved by Grace. Well, out there in the ministry field, I run into so many Christians. They call me a legalist, call me a Pharisee, uh, call me a Judaizer, call me everything. And then they say, I'm saved by grace. Well, I... For the longest time, I was trying to figure out, who is this Grace woman? But I finally came across a picture. Well, there's one woman who had a little issue with that. Uh, she didn't like it. Uh, it, it. It was mean. And um, it, she, she said that this slogan, Saved by Grace, um, was actually a gift from Yah. That's basically it. And uh, the, the slogan... Yeah, it was a gift from Yah. Well, if it deceives people into believing that they're going to go to heaven and they can just do whatever the heck they want to do if they accept Jesus, uh, well, I'm sorry, it's not a gift from Yah. Okay? But this woman just kept going on and on and on and on, being very tenacious about nothing. You know, she says, oh, I keep Torah and this and that, but... Uh, fact is she doesn't or else she wouldn't be a Christian but she took offense at that and it's like well I'm gonna I'm gonna just say this I like to hit you between the eyes with the truth okay I like to incite a little bit of emotion and get you thinking and maybe even open up the scriptures and when you open up the scriptures I pray that your eyes are opened to the truth that lies within the scriptures because quite frankly Christianity is based on a lie and I see not only we have the pagan garbage you know worshiping trees and bunnies and eggs and all that stuff but this PC uh, new age type worldly one world religion type philosophy 
has moved its way into Christianity, too. Where you have to be politically correct, don't step on any toes, you have to be nice all the time. You do, you have to be nice all the time. And uh, don't hurt anybody's feelings. That's, that's the way Christians believe a ministry should be put forward. Well, if you read Scripture, and if you see... How Yahshua approached things, if you see how the Talmudim and the Apostles approach things, they didn't beat around the bush. They weren't politically correct. They didn't do any of that stuff. They rebuked severely those false teachings. Exactly what I do. I'm taking my example from those who set the example. Okay? Those who set the example for our lives. I'm taking the example from them, and I'm applying it to my ministry. Okay? You might think I'm mean, but if I'm putting the truth right in your face, and if I put up a picture that says, Saved by Grace, with a picture of grace there, because I tell you, I was, for, for a long time, it's like, who is this grace woman that runs around and saves these Christians? I can't figure it out. You know, I, I've never seen her before, but, you know, I got a good photograph of her. But um, to take offense at something that is revealed, okay, uh, the, the, the lie that's uncovered, to take offense at a lie being uncovered, where's your spirit lie? Seriously, where does your spirit lie? And just seeing how most Christians are like this nowadays, I'm thinking... They're not going to be ready for the tribulation. Of course, most of them, and I say most, don't even believe they're going to be here for the tribulation. They believe they're going to be taken up on, with some magical fairy wings and taken off into a rapture to take them away from the tribulation. And a lot of them believe that the tribulation is only for us, the Jewish people. Well, you know... Even if there was a rapture, and if it was, was only for the Jewish people, I'm prepared for it. Spiritually, I'm prepared for it. Okay? My Messiah went through a lot more heinous things than I could ever dream of. So whatever I have to go through for him, since he went through so much for me, bring it on. Bring it on. Because this body is just a shell. That's all it is. Okay? But I have news for you, Christians. Okay? You're not going to be taken up in some magical rapture. And the truth does hurt. And if the truth is hitting you right here between the eyes, guess what? It's going to hurt a little bit. It's going to sting. But the sting goes away. Just open up your scripture and start researching what hits you be between the eyes. Okay? Because that's where I come from. I come from scriptural truth. But... I hope you could fit it in your tiny little heads that being nice and metrosexual, yeah, I use that term for both. Wow, look at that. It's sort of like a segue in radio. But anyways, being nice and universalist and accepting everything, let's accept everybody and everything that they do. I accept your beliefs as long as you accept mine. I'm sorry, that's not the right approach. That's new age philosophical garbage. Okay? And it's it's not going to prepare you for what's to come. You will live through the tribulation. And I have a feeling many of you Christians are going to start bowing to the false Messiah. Okay? You're going to cave under the pressure, and you're going to bow to the false Messiah. Why are we supposed to put on the full armor? Why are we at war with the spirits of darkness? Huh? armor, war, but then we're supposed to be accepting and nice. I'm sorry, not once will you find where Yahshua, the, the Talmudim, or the uh, uh, apostles, not once are you going to find where they were nice, they tiptoed around, they were politically correct, and everything else. PC is man-made, okay? PC has no place in ministry. You're either with Yahshua 100% or you're not. If you're lukewarm, he's going to spit you out of his mouth. Other translations say vomit. Okay? 
and uh, being PC and adopting all this crap from the world and bowing down to your little idols, your little tree and bunny and egg idols, okay, your little shamrock idols, your little cupid idols, okay, all this stuff that you've brought into your uh, your house of faith, so to speak, okay, th you're not going to be prepared for anything that is to come, okay? The time is now to get into Scripture, get into the Word, pray for understanding, pray for direction, pray for retention, and meditate on the Word. So much comes to you when you trust only in Yahshua to teach you His Word. When you meditate on the Word, so much comes to you. All this truth is revealed to you. But now is the time, because the time is short. You will not have all kinds of time. And another thing, Yeshua said he's going to rule the new Jerusalem with a rod of iron. Does that sound nice or does that sound mean? Huh? When he says, get away from me, you workers of lawlessness, I never knew you. Is that nice or is that mean? Let me tell you something. No matter what I do, it's not nearly as harsh as what Yahshua will do to you if he finds you to be lukewarm or cold where he is concerned and where his Torah is concerned. I'm just telling you that because I care for you and I love you. And I want to hang out with you in the new Yerushalayim. Okay? Seriously. But people are just not ready. Not ready for whatever's to come. And I have to say, it's not a pretty sight. Not a pretty sight at all. And uh, I, I just pray that somehow, some way, you're going to lose this worldly outlook on faith. And you're going to come into the true faith. You're going to come into the scriptures and embrace them. And build up that spiritual armor. And become the warrior that Yahshua needs you to be in these final days. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Shalom, shalom. Take care.